So to begin with, we can see that the main area that we happen to have right here contains nothing except the contact us H1 headline. In fact, if you find it easier, you can separate these things and don't forget to add a very simple comment in there if you wish. Just saying this ends the main div. So now that we have that sort of taken care of in here, we can see that it is in fact empty, void, nothing in there. So what I want to do is to enter some form information and form elements and then we'll go about styling those elements. So in order to do that you'll find that at the very top where you have your common inserts you'll notice that there are layout and there's also form elements that you can insert as well. So to begin with, the first thing we're going to add anytime you work with a form is the form tag itself. Open and close form tag. So if we were to click right there, what you should see is a red little form element that is inside here. And if we were to look at this in our code view, quite simply, you can see that it's just got this open form, close form information. If we open that up, which will be absolutely fine to do. And the reason we do that is because we are going to be entering information inside of this form. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with this. And if you remember, I'm using the same CSS code that I was using in the previous examples. So main already has some information pertaining to what we want to do to the inside information. So, you know, main the box itself, the div, the H1s, H2s, and paragraphs. Well, we don't really have any H2s, although we can put some in. And as you can see in here, our paragraphs are going to be styled a certain way as well. And what we should not remember about all of these things, the content has padding on the left and the right hand side. You'll notice that I could have also included the form itself to have padding on the inside and outside as well. So H1, H2, paragraph, and I could have also said form just to indent some of the elements inside there. We could do that. We could also just specifically put some of these elements inside of paragraphs. And if we had them inside of paragraphs, we could then be able to adhere to what the paragraphs are doing inside of these elements as well. So let's take a look. I'm going to position my cursor inside here. In fact, even if I wanted to press return, you'll see that now I've got two paragraphs. And you can see that the paragraphs, see here in my code and here in my design view, are already implemented with the sort of padding that we had taken a look at over here. So that's OK. We can embed inside of these paragraphs now some form elements like for example here we've got something called the text field and if we click on the text field by the way if you didn't see this window it's probably because your code or your cursor was inside this code but here I'll just select this and remove it and just to make sure I'm putting my cursor here in the design view and you'll notice what I'm gonna enter first is the text field so first of all, we can give it an ID like F name, which would be representing first name. And then we can actually give it a label as well. So I'll say first name. The label is what we're going to be seeing on the HTML side. The ID is used for, well, either CSS or any of the programming languages that you would need to implement and make this form work with, for example, a database or something like that. So we're going to wrap with the label tag. So the label is going to be around this name, but also the object as well. Why? Because we're positioning the form item before the form item, the label that is. So uh, I'm also going to put in a colon for that label name as well, first name. And we'll click OK and check out what you've got. You've got first name here and you've got this new text area right next to it. If we were to open up in our code view, we could see exactly what just happened. The label tag wrapped around everything. The first name that was here, as well as the input tag, which provided us with that little box. So this is all great, works perfectly fine. And now we have one element. What I'm going to do now is to go into the second paragraph. See the paragraph here? Second paragraph, and we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to call it L name for last name 
And here we're going to actually spell out last name, put in a colon. Now you'll also notice that, you know, much like all the other paragraphs that we've been using, and if I go to my code view, I'll show you why. And that's because we actually have these elements not only in the form, but look, there's a paragraph here which has the label, and a paragraph here which has the label and the input tag. So that works out okay for us. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do with regards to how this looks. If I wanted to, for example, have first name on the top and this underneath it, well, what we could do, as you'll see later on when we style this, is to make this text area here, as you can see, that's what it's called, input type, right? It's that text type. We can make this input tag actually be block level. And as you remember, when we were looking at links, they won't be next to each other. They'll always be underneath. Now, if we wanted to, in the temporary short term, I could just shift return and put a BR tag there. Simple little line break. But I'm going to remove that and show you that we'll probably do something a little bit better with CSS. So let's add some other things. And we'll do that quite simply by putting our cursor right here next to it there and you'll notice what I'm going to do is just press return creating a new paragraph as you can see so I have a new paragraph wrapped around everything why am I doing that well remember the paragraphs are indenting our elements 20 on each side now I could do that with styling in a different way later but we'll see how to do that in a much um, later video so as you can see at this point what I want to introduce is the actual text area. Now text areas can be kind of interesting because as you'll see here I can give it an idea I'll call it like comments and why not put a label? We'll put a label and we'll say um, let's see uh, enter your comments here should be fine with a little colon Wrap with the label tag, sure, why not? Before the item, sure, I want that before the element. And as you can see, I've got these two things separated like this. Well, that's not going to do for me as this one does. So I will position my cursor right between the two elements and press Shift Return, entering a BR tag, a break tag, right? So what you see now is something called a text area, this text area. And as you can see, it's got character width and number lines. Number lines is providing it with a height value and the width in characters is determining how large it is. But as you'll see later on, what we can also do with this is to actually provide some CSS that will sort of style it. We can give it a width, we can give it a, a, an actual height, as well as background color, stuff like that. Notice in here, um, when you do select the object, as you can see, I've selected that object. Um, you can apply classes a little bit later on just quite simply by working in this fashion. If you put your cursor right inside of it, you'll be able to see, yeah, it's multi-line as it should be. It's going to be multi-line. Uh, we could also, as you can see, it's got its ID name in here. You can even enter an initial value. Enter your comments here could have been written directly inside of the object itself, but I don't want to do that in this case. So, when we come back, I'm going to talk to you about two other elements that we can enter into our code, and that is working with radio buttons and check buttons as well.